morning and welcome to chapel for Monday, September 14th, 2020. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's reading for our devotion comes from Genesis chapter 1. It's a very familiar account for many of us, the creation of the world. And our theme for today is a wonderful world for the crown of God's creation. And this entire section of scripture, even though it's from the Old Testament, is all beautiful gospel. It describes in detail, given by God to his prophet Moses, exactly how the creation of the world began. And the gospel is that this is all for you. You are the crown of God's creation. You are what he loves and cherishes more than anything else. And all the details, all the words found in Genesis chapter 1 are given to you so that you can understand exactly who God is and also what he has done for you. It begins in the beginning. From Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now God could have stopped the chapter right there. He could have just left it as it is. He doesn't need to go into detail for you, but he did out of grace, out of love. He wants you to know precisely what he has done for you. And so for the rest of chapter one and even into chapter two, we see God's love for you. God's love in what he prepared, what he planned, what he brought forth out of his love and simply his words. We take this as truth, as all scripture is truth, even though the world around us is ready to attack the efficacy and truthfulness of scripture. But we understand that what God has done here has given us an insight into the time before time began, and then into the very beginnings, the very origins, the very genesis, of the world. Let's take a little bit closer look at the details of this beautiful account. We read from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated for the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Things that he gives day and night are for our good, not his own. He doesn't need to name them, but he does it for us. Day two. Let there be an expanse between the waters, and let it separate the water from the water. And God made the expanse, and he separated the water that was below from the expanse of the water that was above. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening and morning the second day. You see that day one and day two both have an evening and a morning, even though the sun and the moon have yet to be created. We also see that God's plan for us is for order in his creation. On to day three. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together to one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathering places of the waters he called seas. God saw that it was good. Again, we have God naming these for us and our good. But he wasn't done there. Day three goes on. And God said, let the earth produce plants, vegetation that produce seed, and trees that bear fruit with seeds in it, each according to its own kind. And it was so. And the earth brought forth plants and vegetation that produce seed according to its own kind, trees that bear fruit with seed in it, each according to its kind. Notice Moses repeats this according to its kind to again emphasize the order that God placed into his creation. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. Of according to its kind really flies in the face of evolutionist theory that things changed from one to another. When God says, according to its kind, that's exactly what he meant. On day four, we see an expansion of what began on day one. When light appeared on day one, now these lights are going to receive their light givers, the sun, the moon, and the stars, when God creates them. 
Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to divide the day from the night, and let them serve as markers to indicate seasons, days, and years. And let them serve as lights in the expanse of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. Notice God here that he plainly gives rules to these heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, and the stars, to maintain order and to maintain the beautiful symmetry that he has established within his creation. From this point forward, human beings will use the sun, the moon, and the stars to tell time, days, and seasons, and years. If parallels day two, remember day two separated the water from the sky. Now we have something to fill the water and the sky with. Day five, verse 20. And God said, let the waters swarm with living creatures and let birds and other winged creatures fly above the earth in the open expanse of the sky. Out of love for you, God creates these animals that are within the water and the sky as well. God blessed these animals and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. God was not done creating animals. On day six, he brought forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock, creeping things, and wild animals, land animals according to their kind, and God saw that it was good. The land, too, is now filled with all varying types of animals, all the wonderful things of God's mind that he gives to us in the animal kingdom. And yet, the crown of his creation is yet to come. Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creature that crawls upon the earth. Earth into poetry, God created the man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. All of the blessings of creation were given to mankind as a gift. Even though God knew the sin of Adam that was coming just a short time later, even still, all the blessings of creation are given to us as a gift from our creator and loving God. Finally, on the seventh day, God rested. Not because he was tired, but because he knew for us we needed a day to rest and to worship him. And so on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and set it apart as holy, because on it he rested from all his work of creation that he had done. Out of love for you, God gave us a seventh day, a day to remember him and to worship him. May this review of the account of the creation remind you of the love that God has for you, a love that was so strong that he wasn't willing to let you die in your sin, but a love that sent Jesus to the cross and to be raised three days later that you might live with him eternally. Amen.